Another question comes from supporter Christian Fernandez. He asks about Old Eastern Norse and what the main grammatical, pronunciation, and orthographic differences uh, between Icelandic and Norwegian manuscripts are in this time period. Um, so we have to distinguish here between Old West Norse and Old East Norse, but then also between Old Icelandic and Old Norwegian. So I'll turn to my trusty chalkboard here. We often talk about Proto-Norse or Proto-Scandinavian being the language spoken in Scandinavia before basically the Viking Age, 8700 or 800. During the Viking Age, uh, when we often call the language Viking Norse, Archaic Norse, sometimes uh, the term Common Scandinavian is used, the Scandinavian language begins to split into a distinct western branch and an eastern branch. By convention, these are called Old West Norse and Old East Norse. From Old West Norse, we see Old Icelandic and Old Norwegian. Old East Norse gives us Old Swedish. Old Danish, and the surprisingly distinct Old Gutnish, which was spoken on the island of Gotland, uh, which belongs to Sweden today. So when we read Old Norse or learn Old Norse today, typically what we're reading or learning is Old Icelandic. I've discussed this in another video in which I've talked about the timeline of Old Norse, and I'll link that in a card. Uh, up here on the screen. And there are manuscripts in Old Norwegian and then in the Old East Norse dialects like Swedish, Danish, Gutnish. Uh, but since most of the literature that's preserved from Scandinavia uh, before the modern period is in Iceland, this is what we use as the basis for learning Old Norse. So what I'll do since I, it seems like your question seems to cover both Old Norwegian, which is Old West Norse, and Old East Norse. I'll talk a little bit about some things that are distinct for Old Norwegian, and then some things that are distinct for Old East Norse. So, one of the major differences that stands out between Old Icelandic and Old Norwegian manuscripts at the earliest period is the loss of H before L, R, and N in Norwegian when these are not lost in Old Icelandic. So in Icelandic, Old Icelandic, the word ring, like something that you wear on a finger, is hringer with an H before the R, whereas in Norwegian, Old Norwegian, it's just ringer, the H is lost. Or hlutr, which just means a thing, or a lot, as in one's lot in life. Uh, is Hlutr in Old Icelandic, but just Lutr in Norwegian with the loss of the H. So this is an early distinction between these languages. Uh, also, fairly early on in Norwegian, you start to see a new form of the word for we that creeps in. So in Old West Norse, Old Icelandic, it's ver. You start seeing in Old Norwegian mer, which uh, is from the verb ending in the first person plural getting attached to the pronoun. So since first person plural verbs like we are doing or we are end in m, so like erum ver, this would mean are, we, that m from the end of the verb is getting attached to the pronoun and that's what's producing mer. So that's a pretty significant difference between Icelandic and Norwegian manuscripts that emerges pretty early, although early Norwegian manuscripts also have there. Uh, some of the difference between Norwegian and Icelandic is sort of orthographic. Uh, for instance, the vowels and endings of words are more often written E and O in Norwegian versus I and U in Icelandic. So 
A name like Loki. You might also see spelled Loke, especially in the very oldest Icelandic text, but in Norwegian texts you see this more consistently, and that is the spelling that you see in Norwegian today, as well as uh, Swedish and Danish, at least if they haven't borrowed backwards from Old Norse, like the name for Loki sometimes. Uh, also then words that have a U and an unstressed syllable are more likely to have an O in uh, Norwegian. So for instance, the word for, uh, let's see, how about, uh, it's always hard for me to think of examples on the fly. Let's just have some random data plural. How about to the women? Konum. In Norwegian, you're much more likely to see konum, although you'll also see konum in very old Icelandic manuscripts too. A uh, phonological difference that also springs to mind is in the treatment of some of the umlaut vowels. So the vowels u, which is the i umlaut of o, and o, which is the u umlaut of a, fall together in Icelandic. These become pretty early in Icelandic. Uh, by 1300, anyway, these become one single vowel, uh, which in modern Icelandic is written as O with two dots. But in Norwegian, these are kept separate up to the present day. So most words in Old Norse that have this vowel are still written with this vowel in Norwegian today. Most words that have this vowel in Old Norse are just written with a plain O today. There's a few exceptions, mostly before the consonant R, which apparently affected vowel quality, but basically Norwegian keeps these vowels separate and Icelandic doesn't. Uh, another pair like that is the vowel pair E, eh, which is the I umla of long A, and the vowel written either long O slash, I often write it like this because, uh, well, I'm fairly influenced by a lot of Norwegian scholars that I'm into. But you'll also see it written this way as O and E together. This is probably a little bit more common in the English and Icelandic speaking world. This is the I umlaut of long O. In Norwegian, these are kept separate, and up to today, these have different outcomes. This has the outcome a ah in uh, Norwegian. This is the outcome u in Norwegian. It's still written as o with a slash. So for instance, uh, the word book, Old Norse bok, the Old Norse plural of this is bukr, books, with this vowel, so it might be written like that. In modern Norwegian, this is bukr, but then in modern Icelandic, this vowel has merged with this vowel, so this is modern Icelandic bikur. And uh, these vowels merge in Icelandic also probably by about 1300, so this is something that uh, distinguishes a lot of old Icelandic and old Norwegian manuscripts too. Now, Beyond Old Norwegian and Old Icelandic, which are very similar to one another, uh, they definitely are one language community, at least uh, till the Black Death. There are some bigger differences between them and then on the other hand, Old East Norse, so Old Swedish and Old Danish. Gutenish is sort of its own outlier, so a lot of what I will mention here does not apply to Old Gutenish. I've been asked a lot about Old Gutenish and comments and emails and such lately. I don't know what's caused sort of this fad for Old Gutenish that's out there in the world right now, but I'll probably eventually do a video about Gutenish specifically because it really is its own different special thing. Uh, so what I'm going to say about Old East Norse applies to Swedish and Danish, but shouldn't be taken as necessarily applying to Gutenish. Okay, one of the big differences between Old West Norse and Old East Norse is that Old East Norse 
makes monophthongs out of all the diphthongs in Old Norse. So, O-W-N, Old West Norse, Norwegian and Icelandic, O-E-N, Old East Norse, Swedish and Danish. Anywhere that you have an E-I in Old West Norse, it's just an E in Old East Norse. Anywhere that you have A-U in Old West Norse, it's just U in Old East Norse. And anywhere that you have Ui, E-Y in Old West Norse, that's also just U in Old East Norse. To this day, this remains a significant difference between Icelandic and most Norwegian dialects on the one hand and Swedish and Danish on the other. So just to give you some examples of words that are affected by this, for instance, the number one is ain in Old Icelandic or Old Norwegian, but it's an in Old Swedish or Old Danish. The word for a dream, like uh, a dream that I had, is draumr in Old Icelandic or Old Norwegian, but in Old Swedish or Old Danish, drum and it may or may not have that R at the end. It will definitely not have it uh, too late. Or to dream like I'm having a dream uh, in Old Icelandic Old Norwegian is droima in Old Swedish or Old Danish it's just drum. So if you compare side by side a word list of Icelandic or Norwegian Nynorsk with Swedish or Danish you'll notice that wherever there's diphthongs in the west, there's a monophthong in the east. And this goes back pretty early, uh, I'd say probably to the end of the Viking Age. This is, uh, we do see the diphthongs in some very early runic inscriptions in Sweden, but by the first manuscripts written in Swedish, they've already gone over to the uh, monophthongs. Another big difference between west and east is how the verb looks, particularly the strong verb. So, I'm going to use the verb to shoot. So, Old Icelandic or Old Norwegian skjota. To say I shoot, ek skit. You, or he, or she, or it, skitter, we, skiotum, the earliest form of y'all is air, so air, skiotu, and they, Okay, so we've got five different forms. We have a first person singular, a second and third person singular, a first person plural, second person plural, third person plural. Notice that in the singular forms, there is I umlaut, so the yo in the root is I umlaut, and it is fronted in the mouth, just a long Y. That I umlaut will not occur in East Norse, or it will be analogized out, so that we actually don't see all these uh, different vowels. And, in fact, the first person singular will have the same ending as the second and third singular, too. So, in Old East Norse, this will probably be spelled skiuta. So, you would get skiuter, skiuter. Similar to the second or third person singular form in Old West Norse, but applied to the first person too, and with no I umlaut. It's got the same vowels in the root. And then, skiutum, skiutin. There's a different second person plural ending in East Scandinavian, which is not fully explained. And then, skiuta. Another big difference that emerges is that in the West, this second person plural ending, that ev, gets attached to the first part of er, the pronoun y'all, multiple u. Sort of like ver gets changed into mer by the m getting attached to it. So this becomes ter in 
Old Icelandic and Old Norwegian, whereas this N gets attached to it in Swedish, and this is what gives us Swedish ni versus Danish e, which doesn't have a consonant attached to it. Also, in Old Swedish or Old Danish, this is vir and ir with a long i rather than a long e. So those are some differences, as well as the first person uh, singular i is yak in Old East Norse. So this is where you get Swedish ja or Danish jai. So there are some differences like that. Uh, there's also some spelling differences in the East. You see W used a lot more for V, whereas FV together is often used for uh, V in the middle of words. So for instance, you'll see something like Hava to have in the West will be spelled in the East with FV, Hava, same thing, but just spelled differently, or water Vatan in the West might be spelled with a T or, or a, I mean a W and then maybe two T's and sometimes a vowel here to show the different syllable which won't be written in the West. Vatan versus probably is pronounced Vatan but just different uh, spelling conventions. Well I dwelled on that one for a while but there's a fair amount of information to go over there. Uh, if you find E.B. Gordon's old introduction to Old Norse uh, this is still available on Amazon and some other sites. It has a pretty good rundown of the basic differences between West and East Norse, and even has some readings in East Norse.